Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to Online Farm Investor Conference webinar about financial results and companies' activities of the year 2017. Today we are hosted by Online Farm Management Board member Salvis Lapinc. Before I give the floor to Salvis, a short reminder about the agenda of the webinar. As always, we will start with the company's presentation after which Salvis will answer all your questions. If you would like to use this unique opportunity to ask a question directly to Mr. Lapinch, please use the question box on the right-hand side of your screen. All questions will be addressed after the presentation. However, you can send the questions in during the presentation. Salve, I invite you to start the presentation. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's nice to have you here on uh, yet again uh, webinar of ours. Now, like I said in my in one of my, my interviews, uh, it's it's in a way. I mean, we we are the ones who started this whole thing of webinars, and uh, uh, for many years we're pretty much the only ones doing them. But these days, uh, it's it's getting more and more difficult to book a decent date because there are so many other companies uh, doing webinars uh, and. Uh, this year in particular, due to a number of reasons, um, pretty much the soonest date after the publication of uh, an audited report we could get was uh, uh, March the 20th. So uh, sorry for that delay, but uh, you know, finally, finally we are here, and uh, so let's let's start and um, try to make the most out of it. Um, yes, so. Um, Let's start with the first quarter uh, in terms of sales. Uh, as you can see, it has been uh, has been quite uh, good. Uh, one of the best quarters in our history, slightly behind the best quarter, uh, last quarter of last year. Uh, we made total sales of uh, almost 32 million euros. Uh, one of the best uh, best quarters. Uh, just. Slight reduction compared to the to the last one. Uh, pharmacies added 5.9 million, Silonos added 1.6 million, and Tono sales added 2.3 million euros to those sales. Now, uh, as far as profits are concerned, again, this is one of the best uh, quarters in our history. Uh, increased by 32 percent compared to uh, uh, last year. Um, one of the good news that we haven't seen for a number of quarters is that the forex effect was basically neutral. You know, we are used to having several hundred thousands up to half a million euros in forex loss. Now that didn't happen this quarter. Uh, and also uh, several quarters in a row I've been uh, telling about how careful we are in, uh, in terms of assessing the value of, of different of our assets and uh, making provisions for this and that. And uh, now sometimes positive surprises also do happen. And uh, especially as far as um, some of the receivables are concerned, because payment discipline in, in, in uh, the some partners has, has improved. Uh, we were able to um, uh, reprovide some of the some of the provisions that we've done. And so the net uh, effect of all those um, accruals back and forth in uh, Q4 this year was uh, 0.7 million euros. Um, so uh, yeah, so pretty much uh, pure business. Uh, pure, and of course, we also have this this tax tax effect um, because of uh, the tax reform in uh, Latvia. And that one I was referring to in in a couple of previous webinars. Well, EBITDA is still around 19 million euros, still relatively stable, although at the lower level. Uh, same applies to the margin. Uh, it's still at 16% and also a slight stabilization. No visible improvement in EBITDA despite the obvious improvement in net profits, pretty much because uh, there are a lot of uh, one-offs that have influenced the whole situation. And uh, normally most of them would not influence EBITDA in any way. So we remain at, at uh, stable levels, but that are uh, somewhat somewhat low compared to what we used to be seeing. Now, if you look at the countries, we have still have very high concentration in, in uh, Latvia and Russia. You see, uh, you see them uh, actually in, in total uh, making something like 70% of our sales. Now, um, in uh, last quarter alone, you see that Ukraine has uh, recovered nicely. Uh, its it share the whole year was uh, quite, quite a poor one, and you remember that pretty much throughout the year, 
Ukraine has been one of the disappointments of ours. Uh, now in Q4 it has improved, it has increased its share to 12% from 7. Um, uh, still uh, countries like Belarus and Kazakhstan, they were not performing as nicely in Q4 and both, both left uh, uh, 3% uh, each. And in, also in Q4 compared, compared to Q3, uh, we don't have no more Netherlands and Turkmenistan among the top 10 countries. Those are replaced by two Central Asian countries of Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. Now, as you know, uh, Netherlands is uh, our cooperation project with the World Health Organization. So, uh, uh, those, of course, uh, that of course means uh, something that we'll see on the next slide. And that is that para acid, acid, anti-tuberculosis product that we have been shipping to the World Health Organization via the distribution center in the Netherlands has disappeared from our top 10 products list. Now, um, other news in, in top 10 product list is, of course, Neuromedin has increased its share even further and has reached 26% for total sales of all farm products, which is uh, one of the highest levels we have seen that, that product in. Um, Adaptol that is in fell, uh, soluble for again increased, increased nicely, to you know it's a second best selling product of ours. And um, also I think it's the first time in any of our top 10 products list that we have meldonium as a player. So yeah, that, that's the one that replaced paramino salicylic uh, acid and uh, the anti-tuberculosis product. Now if you have a brief look at the full year of 2007, have sales of 122 million euros, which is an increase by 10% compared to last year. Um, total sellers had added 8.5 million pharmacies, 21.6 and still almost 5.1. I'll be going into greater detail about that in a later stage. Now profit, uh, it's virtually flat compared to last year. And uh, but still um, even this year, we have about three million of sort of one-off effects uh, that have influenced that. Uh, of course, forex loss. Uh, although the, th the last quarter was forex neutral, we still had some uh, forex issues earlier in the year, which you may remember. Uh, and uh, through those, we lost about 1.9 million euros. For most part, those are of course ruble fluctuations. Although, although to some countries we do sell in dollars, and, and you know the dollar wasn't behaving all that nice this year uh, either. And, and other one-offs like uh, provisions for different sorts of assets including including goodwill and uh, including uh, receivables also generate about 1 million euros in, uh, in extra uh, loss of profit. Now uh, if you look at the, 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 the growth drivers, the products that um, that uh, we have been selling during this whole year. We see that from our top 15 products, nine are growing. Uh, well, the leading, the leading one, Nermity, although its share in last quarter increased, it has demonstrated some shrinking of sales in uh, in uh, whole year. Uh, but uh, for Mark Furosol, uh, both uh, soluble uh, furaginum products, um, they they've been growing in Q4, and they've been growing throughout the year. And they added about 1 million in sales. Um, Etatazine did add 0.7% uh, and Memantine added about 300,000. Uh, in terms of percentages, Memantine grew by 58%, 1 chloride, 3.5 dimethyl adamantane, whatever your name, uh, it's one of our chemical products. Uh, that one has increased by about 48%. Uh, and etatizine, uh, our uh, antiarrhythmic product, has increased uh, by 15%. Now, in terms of losses, no surprise here. Of course, um, you know, pretty much lost bit in, in all the other products. But aminosalicylic acid, uh, of course, we a uh, lot, uh, uh, lot less sales um, in this year compared to last year. You know, Netherlands uh, have demonstrated some sales reduction as well through that. Uh, in, in past, we also lost 2.4 million, and Adaptol we lost about half a million in sales. In terms of percentages, it's pretty picture is pretty similar. Uh, it's it's um, all the others lost 43 percent. Passa lost uh, less than 40 percent, and Remontadin lost 30 percent, which is slightly surprising, um, given that this 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 is quite quite a season for Remontadin. But obviously, the outbreak of the flu this year wasn't uh, as as big as it was. Uh, year before. 
Now, um, if we look at uh, if we look at the countries, and ten of our top fifteen countries were growing, and uh, still the leaders had the most to our growth. Uh, Latvia, uh, Russia, and Belarus combined added more than five and a half million to our sales increase. Um, a loss, however, came from Ukraine, others, and Uzbekistan, and they all together uh, deducted something like 4.3 million from our sales. Um, again, Netherlands throughout the year were growing. Uh, it's just the last last uh, month that it hasn't been performing that nicely, last quarter, uh, and so was uh, Germany. Um, in terms of, in relative terms, the 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 most of the sales we lost in Ukraine, 21 percent, although it was much more uh, earlier in the year. So, like I said, it did catch up in the last month of the year. Uh, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, pretty much the same story with, uh, with Uzbekistan. You remember at the beginning of 2017 that sales to that country was not performing great at all. Now, um, so the, the performance of key daughter companies is here. Uh, it's Latvia, Saptiek has uh, made a sales of 22%, net profit of 1 million, total sales and lost medical made sales of 13 million and made net profit of 1.2 million. And Silvanos uh, made sales of 4.6 million, but made a net loss of about 100,000 uh, in 2014. So that was a brief um, introduction, uh, an overview of uh, how we've been doing in 2017 and the last quarter of that year. Uh, and now the pretty typical uh, question that we ask at this uh, this stage of the webinar, after I present in the latest numbers, is what do you think for our recent numbers? Uh, are they just what you expected, uh, or they are better than expected, or worse than expected? Uh, while you are voting, uh, once I did the poll, um, well, once I did the, the um, chart on uh, at which stage. Uh, you place just as expected, no, and, and, and that uh, that uh, sort of analysis showed that uh, participants of webinar usually expect Orn Farm to make a net profit of three million. Uh, now uh, this quarter made five million, so see if if uh, if that's what you expected, or we finally managed to positively surprise you. Um, so let's take. Um, uh, a few more seconds so you can vote um, before we, we move to our next uh, uh, next topics. Um, webinar this time won't be that long. We don't have any really specific uh, focus, uh, focus subject except maybe a little bit. Uh, we will focus on what our plans are for this year. Um, we already um, published some of them. Uh, yesterday, as we published our um, February sales, by the way, I uh, hope you noticed we demonstrated uh, growth by a third in, in February, so I think quite, quite an impressive number. So February really was uh, quite an outstanding uh, month for us. Yeah, so I think it was uh, given time enough for, um, for polling, and we could probably uh, move on. Um, yep, uh, thank you. So, uh, recent events, uh, one of the recent events uh, that came in the, uh, along with the publication of unaudited reports our course proposed dividends. The board proposed a total dividend of 3 million euros, of, uh, or roughly uh, 0.21 euros per share. Uh, of course, this is so far the uh, just the board suggestion it still has to be um, approved by the council, excuse me, and of course the AGM. Uh, there are still no proposals as far as record date or payment date is concerned. Those still have to be pretty much, um, pretty much um, elaborated into your cash flows. Uh, normally, however, we would expect that to be around summer. Uh, and uh, again, uh, since we do not have any um, sort of um, any shareholders of ours that have, would have, are fully taken power, so we still. Uh, do not have a sort of longer term dividend policy because we believe that would be something for the uh, incoming shareholders uh, also to have say on. Now, uh, therefore, the next poll question is exactly about that. Uh, 
we've been trying say, for a couple of years, uh, but pretty much throughout this decade, we have been uh, dividend payers. Um, uh, we've been you know, um, doing different levels of dividend, including the huge ones for the, from the profits of, of 2016. Now, let me ask you, do you think this um, dividend um, proposal is, um, is a generous one? Or maybe it's just right, just what you expect, and just something that you feel fine with. Uh, or maybe this is this is uh, you know not you know, too generous or not generous enough. Uh, so again, um, I haven't done research on on these sort of poll questions, so I cannot give you a hint of uh, what I think webinar participants expect as far as dividends are concerned. Uh, so. Uh, you're pretty much on your own in, in, in terms of this decision. Uh, I'll give you I'll give you a few more uh, seconds uh, for the voting. It's not a difficult question, is it? Um, yes. Yeah, so um, yeah, I think that that should do it. That should do it. I hope I have uh, enough votes to to uh, have a feedback for you uh, from you. Thank you. Um, yeah. So um, many of you and different meetings and emails and. Uh, Conversations have been asking more for me for any guidance as far as 2018 is concerned, and uh, I've always said that you know let's wait for a webinar so everybody can can learn about those. And uh, here they are. Um, we are here talking about the the major uh, companies of ours, and numbers are of course millions. Uh, now, um, yeah. Of course, this will uh, remain in, in uh, you'll always be able to see this as a record and also publish this presentation uh, shortly after the webinar. But the key numbers that I would like to uh, I would draw attention to, um, Silvanos, uh, we expect that to be nicely in profits, in about half a million profits this year as as uh, the uh, merger or reorganization of Silvanos with Longo is going to be completed and all the extra costs associated with the next company would be gone. So this year we expect Silvanos to do much, much nicer than they used to be. Now both Thomas Elist and Elist Medical from quite solid profits in last year seem to be not doing as nicely or are not expected to be doing it lastly in 2018. Uh, and there's only one reason for that, as, as we have taken uh, Tonos Elast into many new markets. Uh, we feel that we have to in invest a bit extensively in their marketing in, that con in those countries, especially since they are launching or having those countries uh, um, higher value added uh, products like compression uh, materials. Um, well, Latvia is up there because that's, that's pretty stable. Um, so they have some sales growth and we still expect net earnings of about 1 million euros. Um, our medical business uh, is clearly improving but mm, well, very close to break even. And so is Biotest. And Biotest basically includes virtually no um, production of oil farms products in um, Belarus. So if that happens, that will be, of course, the present surprise, and we might face the break even even sooner. And now two, of course, big guys, oil and farm itself and the group. You see that we are quite ambitious as far as sales are concerned, but are not as ambitious as, as, as ambitious as far as net earnings are concerned. And uh, yeah, this, this year we are planning to invest more than 3 million euros in different uh, research associated to uh, our existing products. We do expect that as a result we will uh, uh, be able to add more um, indications uh, to our existing products and uh, our files would be in a better shape, in a better condition, so probably would be eligible uh, in many more markets uh, for us to offer. Uh, and uh, you will see those those costs in uh, administrative and maybe later in notes you will see this as R&D. Uh, anyway, these are sizable investments of more than 3 million euros that we plan to make this year uh, for that, uh, for those products. And of course they will leave uh, slightly adverse impact in, in uh, earnings of uh, 
uh, of uh, 2018. Uh, the same applies pretty much in, uh, in, uh, on the entire group because as you see, oil and farm by far is a major player in the group. Um, we also have quite, quite a relatively, I would say, ambitious uh, plans as far as sales are concerned. And uh, we are a little bit um, not as, as optimistic as far as earnings concerned for the same reason because 3 million euros in terms of extra um, uh, R&D cost, of course, are, is, is, is quite a significant number uh, even for the group. Uh, however, have all the reasons to expect that in future years that would make our life in existing markets and, and, and new markets a lot more easy and uh, profitable and pleasant. Uh, and therefore, we have come to our next question. Um, which is, um, yeah, um, sorry, I don't have a separate slide for that. Um, but Elizabeth, could you please place our next polling question? And that is, what is your view on our um, guidances for 2018? Um, do you feel they are realistic? Uh, do you feel that we could, do better, we could do better than that, and therefore the guidances are more, more on a pessimistic side? Or uh, you think that uh, oil and farm hasn't been doing all that well in guidance since 2017, and uh, this is probably very optimistic, and things are going to be worse than that. So whatever your opinion is, um, please um, uh, please make uh, cast your vote. Yeah, again, uh, just a hint. Uh, you know, you normally said that you expect three million per quarter of net profits for us. So uh, uh, maybe that. Uh, reminder might help you uh, make your choice. And uh, I'll give you, give you a few more seconds. Well, it's nice to see that 25 attendees have joined us. Uh, since uh, webinars are available on YouTube afterwards, I've seen the number of attendees actually dropping. But 25 is, 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 is quite, a, quite a good number. And uh, maybe you know, this is what I see joining us at the moment, maybe eventually. Well, obviously, eventually, the actual people that have connected different stages of the webinar will be greater. So, uh, thanks for attending. Um, so, we therefore, try to be quite informative in those webinars. Uh, yeah, thanks. I think we provided enough time for uh, voting. We'll see. I don't see the results yet, but um, uh, I will see them later. And, uh, and they, in fact, are important to us. So, yeah, could we, therefore, um, I still see that you have a uh, poll questions on your screens. Um, as as soon as uh, as soon as those are gone, um, I'll have one more uh, thing that I would like to speak about during this webinar. Uh, and then it's uh, then it's Q and A time. Uh, you know things um, things have been changing. Uh, Elizabeth, I still see the the guidance on the audience view screen. Could you take that away, please? Yes, uh, it has been taken away. But okay. Perhaps you could try to change okay, the slides. Cool, yeah. Okay. Good. Because I, I see that in the audience view. Uh, yeah. So um, uh, there've been uh, some publications, and, and those of you who are joining us from abroad might not necessarily be updated on that. So I thought it's only fair that you are pretty much in the same field where we are here in Latvia. Uh, now, uh, what has happened over the last few days really was that various Latvian media have been publishing information. Salve. Excuse me. Yeah. There are, I still don't see your screen, so I will make some adjustments quickly. Yeah, I was keep yeah. Because I uh, I see the because what I see on the screen. Uh, can you see me? So can you? Yes. Now it's working again. Yeah. Please continue. Right. So uh, yeah. Um, uh, so for those of you who are not, uh, do not have an access to FN media, uh, might be in a different sort of information field. But uh, in order for 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 those of you who are not uh, based in Latvia, not reading Latvian media, I uh, thought it would be fair that I'll bring you some update on, on what's going on here. Uh, is that few days several uh, several media in Latvia published information that there would be possible quite immediate replacement of management board or uh, some members of the management board to uh, some of the former politicians. 
Um, uh, well, what I can tell you is that uh, what we know is that the council meeting has been convened for uh, tomorrow, March 31st. Uh, however, as, as far as board is informed about the agenda of that meeting, uh, management board changes are not on that agenda. However, that doesn't mean that could not be brought into the agenda or something, but uh, this is what the sort of official, I'll call it the statement from, uh, from the board is that yes, there is a meeting, no, there is no changes to management included in agenda. So, uh, but uh, again, those of you who are in Latvian sort of information field, you have um, heard this and that about how, how the inheritance related issues are being dealt with and, and uh, what sort of um, different debates and um, bigger or smaller conflicts there are. And therefore, let me uh, ask you the last question before we go to Q&A. Session is, 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 what's your opinion? I mean, do you follow that at all? Uh, maybe you don't care about what's, what's being said in, in different media, including tabloids. Do you think it's it's harming the company, or maybe you think it's helping the company? This company probably gets more media, or it's harming because that's not necessarily the best media we are having. Uh, so uh, please uh, share your opinions on this, uh, and uh, yeah, I'll give again uh, some time then before we move to questions. Um, so far in the question part of the screen. I don't see any questions of yours, but uh, you know, maybe maybe Elizabeth knows, uh, has some questions from the audience, or you still have some time to, uh, to write them. So um, please uh, have a few more seconds for voting. Um, and uh, I think it should do it. 28 participants. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so see, yeah, screen is back. Um, yeah, so that, that's pretty much, uh, that's pretty much uh, the message from my side at the moment, uh, and I would be glad to answer your questions if you have any. Elizabeth? Thank you, Salve, for the presentation. And now I will proceed with the questions uh, that were sent just in. And a reminder to those who haven't yet submitted their questions, you can do it in the questions section in the settings panel zone. So the first question is, are there any news about Turkey? Um, yeah, the, the news about Turkey are uh, that, uh, well, not news, basically it's um, following uh, one of the latest schedules of ours, meaning that in about two months' time we should be having our first product approved in Turkey, uh, which is Neo Midante. Uh, which is none of our super top sellers. This is like number 11, number 12 product of ours. So that one we expect to be fully approved in Turkey really as a matter of um, roughly two months, uh, followed hopefully by Nehru Medin about three to four months later. Uh, but that is a in a little earlier stage and um, yeah, of course, uh, uh, you know, therefore subject to uh, more risks than uh, being approved than, than uh, Neo Midente, which is uh, almost approved. Elizabeth? Thank you. Are you looking into South America? Is this region interesting for you? Um, yes, but with some very selected products. Um, our understanding of South America is that as far as as, as anti-tuberculosis products that we have to offer, and maybe some antibacterial products, that is uh, an interesting market of ours. Uh, but uh, due to uh, special treatment of patent issues, I would call it that way, um, overall, uh, generics market of South uh, America is, is generally very, very cheap. Uh, therefore, uh, this is certainly not our um, sort of um, priority region, so to speak. But for some products, we, we certainly consider, and we have been selling uh, last year, actually, some of the anti-tuberculosis products to Argentina. Uh, we are selling some of the chemical products to Brazil. 
So of course, uh, in overall sales of 120 plus million, this, these numbers are still miserable, but there are some projects already ongoing with uh, South American uh, countries. Elizabeth? Thank you for your answer. And the next question is, could you address the other one-offs of minus uh, 1 million euros in 2017? And perhaps you could specify as well. Yeah, this, these are the, the, the one-offs, different sorts of provisions uh, uh, that we have had uh, during the year. Pretty much in every uh, quarterly report, uh, we've been uh, saying about some provisions we have done uh, for basically two main sets of reasons. Uh, one set of reasons uh, uh, would have been uh, the um, receivables. Uh, at some points in time, some, some Russian companies uh, were not paying as nicely and uh, from the point of view of prudency, we made some, uh, some provisions for those. Uh, at other point, there were some issues with, uh, with uh, Uzbekistani companies and we've been making some provisions for those. And I remember the entire beginning of the year that country, uh, in that country wasn't that great for us. Uh, and another set of reasons, of course, are our uh, daughter companies that we have acquired that at, at different stages of their development, uh, their ability to pass impairment tests is different. So at some points in time, uh, we might, might do some provisioning for them. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes you do some provisions and sometimes you, you recover some provisions. But the overall effect of those things in 2017 uh, was, uh, was one point, uh, roughly 1 million euros. Elizabeth? Thank you. The next question is, February results showed significant increase in sales in Japan. Is it expected to continue to see sales increase in Japan in this year? Um, yes, uh, we do expect more shipments to Japan this year, uh, but what well, Japan was like number five market of ours, uh, and I don't think it's going to be number five market of ours throughout the year. Uh, yeah, we expect general increase of, of sales in Japan in this year compared to last year, but uh, on overall numbers of, of, of group, it's still unfortunately not going to make a major difference. But there are some good things started as far as our chemical production is concerned. Elizabeth? Thank you. Are you increasing investments in research and development on new products? Um, yes, uh, well, let's say uh, the, the, the big increase in research and development that we plan for this year is by far uh, more related to existing products because the difficulties that we have entering some of the new markets are mainly related with the quality of uh, our dossiers. Uh, and of course, no, no, you, you need to invest into different researches to update your dossiers. So that would be vast majority. We're still working on some of the new products as well. Uh, however, the, the increase in that funding is not as, as big, at least for 2018. Elizabeth? Thank you. The next question is, can you specify other operating expenses of 3.7 million euros for 2017? Um, not immediately, uh, but other, other operating expense, among other things, are where some, uh, some uh, of the provisions end up. But, um, yeah, what I could do, though, is I could ask uh, uh, some of my colleagues uh, to maybe prepare a split, and uh, as I publish the, uh, this webinar, a uh, link to this webinar record, uh, I could probably, uh, I don't know, not sure how quickly they can prepare that answer, but what I could do is I could uh, publish that breakdown as soon as I have it. That was better. Thank you. And the last question is, is it likely that there will be major changes in management in the future? Um, that's, that's certainly not the question for me to, to answer. Uh, what we do know, of course, is that um, very, I mean, there's, the, the, there's a new um, I mean, the, the, the set of shareholders is going to be uh, all new. Uh, there most likely will not be one major shareholder. There might be, you know, at least three. Uh, that, that big big you know, portion is most likely going to be divided into three parts. Uh, obviously, um, every part would like to have 
uh, some of their own interest being represented in council because um, the general meeting of course elects the council so there is a good chance that we might see uh, for that reason but again that should be answered by the shareholders uh, we, could, we could see some changes in, in the council and uh, that is therefore very possible that the council might uh, might like to see some changes in the management board so uh, I think there is a uh, there, there is uh, such kind of possibility Two more questions have dropped in, and so the next question is, how do you view the tax reform that allows company to reinvest its profit for faster development of company? Well, we have, um, in, in that sense, I mean, in our case, uh, I wouldn't say the tax reform is heavily facilitating our our ability or willingness to, to invest because we have been investing in ourselves anyway quite quite heavily over the last number of years. I mean you could compare it to what our unreturn, uh, uh, what our um, undistributed um, earnings uh, are. Uh, so that's you know, see that's, that's quite, uh, quite, a, quite a huge number. Uh, as, as far as um, you know, there, there's so many factors involved. Uh, it's, it's not just the corporate income tax, but there's also uh, changes to uh, social tax to um, personal income tax, uh, then the, the, the full effect of that tax reform on us, it's, it's really a little too early to, to assess at the moment. Um, let's say, um, yeah, we're, we're probably somewhere in the middle. We, we have always been paying dividends, but not heavily. So uh, as far as the amount of tax we're paying is concerned, as far as corporate income tax is concerned, We'll, we'll see it after at least the first quarter. Um, we, are, we are not, uh, uh, we probably uh, will not see the major influence in our financials from uh, from this uh, tax reform. Uh, what would be the more detailed, you know, if you start to go into greater detail, what, what impact would it had had on our company? Uh, let's, we certainly need some time to assess. That was better. Thank you. And the next question is, what are the risks in 2018? How potentially can they affect 2018 numbers? Uh, well, um, the, the two sets of risks uh, that I can identify for 2018, one are uh, same good friends of ours, all the political and economic risks of CS countries. And we still have a huge uh, CS exposure that, that we're trying to minimize, but it's still there. And, and as you know, from time to time in those countries, we do have uh, currency devaluations and some political issues and, and sanctions and blockades and wars and, and unfortunately different, different not, not as nice things. Uh, and those risks are there and those risks have been there uh, and, and uh, they're present and they haven't gone anywhere. Um, given the current state of affairs, um, I would say that another risk of, of, of oil pump for the sort of medium to short term is, is, is really ability of the management and the, the shareholders and incoming shareholders to um, run this transition period smoothly uh, and uh, yeah uh, uh, and, and, and if, if they manage to do so then uh, uh, I believe the company has um, uh, has uh, you know uh, all the great future uh, you know, uh, but if if company becomes uh, becomes a, a tool in, in, in into whatever disputes they are around, then it's certainly not helping anyone. It was better. I'm not sure whether you can answer to this question, but what is the average salary in the company? Well, uh, I don't have the latest data. I've been doing it from time to time in my presentations, but uh, um, so I can. Yeah, probably, probably add that uh, into uh, add that to the uh, answer to the previous question. Uh, in general, I, I was historically uh, for a number of years uh, comparing that to the average in Riga region, average in uh, in, in in Latvia, and average in, in chemical and pharmaceutical uh, industry of Latvia. And oil and farm was uh, average salary in oil and farm was higher than in every one of those those uh, subgroups. But uh, yeah, what I could do is, of course, find out what, what the number is and uh, add it to the answer about the uh, other uh, operating expenses. That was better. Thank you. And all questions have been answered. Okay. Well, thank you. We have been, we have been quite efficient. 
and uh, thanks for uh, maintaining the interest. And uh, we'll be trying to do our best uh, to deliver good results. Thanks everyone for joining. Yes, and as always, the recording of the webinar will be available in the NASDAQ Baltic YouTube channel and in the company's announcements. Salve, thanks for spending the last hour with us, and participants, thank you for joining. Thank you.